Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge University lecture about detents. Fixing them, to be exact. This is part two of a two-part video on this topic. The first part was released a couple days ago, and it talked about the, I won't say toolless ways of doing a fix. You could just use your screwdrivers to take the knife apart and try the fix that I have suggested in those videos for either too loose or too tight or too strong or too weak, however you want to phrase it. Check that out. But the issue with your detent might be more complicated, something that can't be fixed by those methods. For this section, we're going to talk about what you can do with tools. Specifically, you need a rotary tool, sort of like a Dremel brand is the first big brand name that came out with rotary tools. And you'll, of course, need some tool tips or heads or bits, whatever you call those parts, for your rotary tool. Before we get into that, if you did miss that video, it's linked. It'll be linked at the very end of this video as well. It'll be linked down in the comment section, so hopefully you can find it easily. So let's get to the tabletop and get started. Here we have the kit. I'm just hand holding my camera. It's got all kinds of different parts and tips. Of course, you can find much smaller kits and you can find larger kits with more stuff in it if you want. I mostly focused on these little bits here at the front. These are little diamond encrusted tips, all kinds of shapes. And it's mostly just the very simple, oh, can't get much closer than that, the very simple sort of rounded headed, you know, it's rounded at the tip instead of flat, and it's diamond encrusted. And there's some that are flat on top as well that we might try for this. The rest of the stuff is all, you know, good for all kinds of other tasks. And you need one of these. Of course, you won't need the Mastercraft brand. If you're in Canada, that's the cheapest way to go. They are louder than Dremels. They vibrate a little bit more than Dremels, you know, because they're just not as good as a Dremel brand rotary tool. But uh, the cheap stuff can get the job done. Let's start off this section by saying there's three main problems that you're going to face. Detent problems. The, one of them is the detent is too strong meaning it's difficult to get the blade to come out. You have to push hard, 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 and then suddenly it flies, or same thing with the flipper, you're pushing, pushing, and suddenly it flies out. Or it's too weak, meaning you, know, you just bear, you push on it and it just you know barely moves. You try hard to go really quick with the flipper and it just sort of comes out or it comes out slowly. It doesn't come out with a very definitive thwack. Or you hold the knife by the handle scales like this and you give it a hard wrist flick, often using your entire arm going whoo, and you suddenly stop. If the blade comes out easily and deploys, that's a sure sign of a weak detent, which we covered in the previous video. So that's all I'm going to say. The causes. For a strong detent, there's generally one cause, and that is that the detent ball is sticking too far out of the lock arm. Here I've got some diagrams. The lock arm is in gray, the blade is in blue, and the detent ball is in red. So sometimes the detent ball is sticking out too far, too proud off of the lock arm. So when it goes deeply into the hole, it doesn't want to climb out of the hole. You put pressure on it, and it's just not climbing out of the hole. And then suddenly it releases. That's pretty easy to fix, and we'll talk about that. The two causes for a soft detent, these are a little bit harder. It could be if you've got your lock arm again, that gray thing, and you get your detent ball, if the ball was sunk too deeply into the lock arm, meaning it doesn't stand out very much. It's a very shallow little bump. This doesn't happen terribly often, but it does happen. Unfortunately, you can't fix that. You're done. The only solution is to live with it, sell it to somebody else, or throw it out. If you got it early enough, 
you may be able to return it if you if you caught the problem early enough. Some brands, if you've taken the knife apart, they won't do any warranty work for you. So if you've got a knife and you can do that hard wrist flick and the blade just comes out, don't even take it apart. Just return it. ASAP. If you can't return it, then try what I'm going to talk about. The second cause might be able to be fixed. And the second cause could be that you've got your lock arm and you've got your ball and then you've got your blade with the hole. They don't line up right. And if they don't line up quite right, you might be able to fix that. Those are the things that we're going to cover in this video. Before we get into those things, visual inspection. We're going to talk about that now. I've got two Sanren Mu 7010s here. Both of them work fairly well. One of them, the detent lets go a little bit easier. This one, you know, the blade doesn't come out with a wrist flick, but when I flick it out like that with the thumb stud, it goes a little bit easier. It takes less pressure. So let's just take a look at it when it's closed. And I'm going to show you really zoomed in close up pictures and I'm going to zoom into this spot right here. So we've got the lock arm and we've got the blade. And we're going to see what it looks like going in right in that spot. There, I've got my more macro lens so we can get closer to start with. But I have to stay on the table for it to stay focused. So you've got the lock arm and you've got the blade and they meet right here. The detent ball. Oh, yeah, I've got to stay down. I keep forgetting. The detent ball is right about there, but of course on the other side. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking at the space between the blade and the lock bar. How much of a space is there? It's almost always going to look like there is some space. You're going to see a little bit of a black line. But if you take a look at this space and then take a look at the space on this one, they don't look the same in a super close up. They're slightly further out. So one of them, the lock arm is further away from the blade when it's at rest. That's a softer detent. And this one is much closer. It's the lock arm is resting pretty much on the blade and it's a better detent. So we're making some assumptions and I should have covered this stuff before. I'm assuming that there's nothing wrong with your pivot area, nothing wrong with your pivot pin, nothing wrong with your ball bearings. If you're using washers, nothing wrong with those. Your pivot screw isn't screwing too tight, you know, pushing these two slabs together so that the blade doesn't move. So we're assuming that there's easy movement of the blade. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to move it either way. So that when you put just a medium amount of pressure on the flipper, the blade just flies open. Or if it's a thumb stud, just medium pressure. Or if there's a hole, you know, a hole in the blade, just medium pressure makes the thing come out and just open up. It often comes with a good thunking kind of sound of the blade, you know, coming out. Each knife has got its own sound, but uh, there's that kind of sound each time. So we're assuming a few things. Not too much pressure. That means the detent's too hard. Like if I got to push really hard to try to get it open, that's too strong of a detent. Too soft of a detent looks like this. The blade comes out and just sort of stops. Even though it has fairly easy movement, it still ends up only coming open part way and stops. So that context is important. I should have mentioned it sooner. Thanks for understanding. Now, there is something you need to be aware of. And then this knife, I'm going to close these so I don't have open edges around. <laughs> On this knife, this is a Sanren Mew 9031. Comes with roller bearings or needle bearings. If you take a look at this knife, you can see the lock arm release has got these milled chimping on it. So it makes it easier to open. That's important because it'll show you a little bit of an illusion. If we're looking down into that zone again, on this knife uh, where there aren't, isn't the jimping, it looks like there's a space between the lock arm and the blade. But over where there's the jimping, 
it's super, super close. And that's simply because the lock arm is almost always slightly rounded off. It doesn't have a perfectly crisp 90 degree corner. It's, you know, slightly rounded at the edge. And then, you know, the light can't get in there. And then so it's darker. So it looks like there's a space on most knives. So there's no space in this one and the detent's just right. The lock arm sits right next to the blade and it works really well. It's a good detent. So the way to test this on your knife, if it looks like there's a space there, grab a piece of paper and a little piece of paper, just the edge, and try to slide it between there. And if it slides in there, okay, cool. Double it up. If it still slides in there, a doubled up piece of paper should never fit it fit in there. If your detent is soft and you can get two pieces of paper in there, well, it'll only go in a tiny ways before it'll hit the detent ball. Be aware of that. But if you can get it behind there just a little bit, two sheets of paper, that's a soft detent. That's really soft. I tore off just the tiniest corner of paper, and this is the one that's got the soft detent. And yep, the piece of paper can get behind there very easily. Here's this San Remu, the one that doesn't have that soft detent, and I'm trying to get the paper behind there, and I can't. It just won't go. There's not enough space. This is 20 pound paper. So it's just too close. So you want it to be that close that your piece of paper doesn't go in there. If you get one piece of paper, it might be okay. This one's okay. But if you double it up and don't just fold it over because that uh, is thicker than, than not putting two together. So now I've got two pieces of paper stacked on each other and let's see if it'll get in there. It does get in there. So like I said, this one's not so soft that, you know, I wouldn't keep it. But this two paper test on a full size knife where the blade is heavier because there's more mass. If you can get two pieces of paper on a full size knife, that's just too much space. I don't think I can even, there you go. On this knife, I can just barely get one piece of paper in there, but I can't get two. So if you have a knife and you just want to investigate it and you don't have super zoom USB microscope or something, you can do the paper test and just see, does one paid paper work? No, that could be a very tight liner lock or frame lock. Does one piece, piece of paper work, but two pieces of paper don't? Chances are very high that that's a good detent, at least what I like in detents. Another visual inspection is after you take the knife apart. So I've got this knife apart. What I want to look at is the blade itself. And what you're looking for is that line. There's going to be a line that is from the detent hole and it arcs back to the end of the handle. I used a black blade because it's easier to see on black. And so what you want to do is follow that line up to the hole and take a very close look at that hole. Is the line going right into the middle of the hole? If it is, you've probably got a decent detent. Sometimes on soft detents, you look at that and that line is either to one side or to the other side of the hole center. It's, it's still going in the hole but it might be very slightly off from one side to the other. It's going to be very difficult for you to see that with the naked eye. But if you've got a high resolution camera, take a perfectly focused picture and then zoom in. And then you can see if that line is on one side or on the other. If it is, you need to remove some metal in that hole. I'm talking about a soft detent so that you can get it to line up. And we're going to talk about how that, how we do that. Now we're going to talk about solutions to problems. The problem with this Best Tech Lizard is that the detent is too strong. The solution to that is the most simple solution, and this is one of the most common problems. Here's my Dremel bit again. I'll show you a close-up of it. This one's 
sort of like bullet shaped at the tip. You know, it's slightly coming in at an angle. So I want to find one of these that just barely fits in the hole. And on this one, the tip goes just a tiny ways into the hole. So this one could be a good one. I'll choose this one. I'll uh, put it into the collet chuck on my Dremel. Uh, put this on a table, a no skid surface, so it won't move around. And perfectly straight up and down. So let's assume that my hand is the tabletop now. Perfectly straight up and down. Just go in the center of the hole and let it buzz there for one second maximum. No more than a full second. And don't put a lot of pressure on. Because, like I was saying in the previous video, tiny fixes are the way to go. So a tiny change, put it back together, test it again, tiny change. So I'm not actually going to run the Dremel on camera right now because the thing is just so dang loud. Or it's not a Dremel, the rotary tool. But I'll take a picture of this first and then I'll take a picture of it after. You can see in this before picture, super close up, that where that line is coming in, you can see that the edge of that hole is being slightly rounded over. There's some wear happening there. We just want to increase that. This is the after shot. It looks identical on this camera, but on the super, super close up, it looks different. I know on the very super close up, it looks messy, doesn't it? But you can tell that there's now a bit of a softer edge. That hole doesn't have quite as steep sides anymore. At the top of the hole, it's been chamfered. The angles have been taken off the top of the hole. Now, I want just a tiny change like that. Now I've got to put it back together and test it. If I do too much, the detent will become too soft and there's, that's too soft is much harder to fix than too hard. So let me assemble it. So it has been adjusted. It's a little bit easier to flip open and now I can consistently open it using my middle finger at the bottom. So I have changed it. I think it's still just a little bit too strong. I've got loads of experience with this. I'm going to do one more tiny, tiny uh, touch with that diamond tip tool into that hole. Oh, by the way, to test it, I didn't put both body screws on, just one, you know, because if I have to take it apart again, it's less wear and tear on the screws. Instead of putting everything back together, just a pivot screw and one body screw is generally enough for a test. The Best Tech Lizard has got a perfect detent now. It just works great and bottom flick is awesome. It's not too hard, not too soft. I did add in the fix that I talked about in part one where I adjusted the lock bar arm. So between the lock bar arm adjustment and that tiny adjustment to that hole, it's just a very good knife now. So that's how you fix a strong detent. Now, for the weak detent. Let's assume this Center Mu 7010 is the one with the weak detent. I mentioned the one problem was that the ball in the lock arm is sunk too deeply into the lock arm. There's zero fixes for that. You just can't do it. The other problem could be, uh, remember the close-up shots I showed you of this knife where the line that the detent ball wore onto the blade, if it's misaligned a little bit, well, you do the exact same thing with one of these tools, except for you don't use one of these you know, pointy tipped ones. You use one that's got a flat head. So it's perfectly cylindrical and a flat head you find one that fits into the hole just barely, so that's the right fit. And what you do is, when you're looking at your zoomed in close up picture of the hole, whatever side the line is more to, you remove a little bit of metal towards that side. So basically, you're trying to move the hole over a little bit. And again, you do tiny little adjustments. How often does that work? I don't have a knife to do it with right now, so I'm not going to wreck one of my knives for the video. I'll be honest with you. 
it doesn't really work all that well. Generally, I end up still having a very soft detent because it's very, very hard to hold a Dremel tool and go perfectly straight in. Chances are you're going to be tilting to one way or the other. And when you're tilting, you're doing what we did to this knife. You're making that edge softer or more rounded so that the ball can come out more easily. So unfortunately, how to fix a soft detent? In most cases, your solution was covered in part one, and that's simply adjusting the lock arm. Now, I didn't talk anything at all about slip joint knives. Now, there are some slip joint knives that have uh, lock arms, except for their detent arms and detent balls, and they've got holes in the blade. Now, you can have one that's just got it on one side, and so it would have two holes in the blade on the same side, so it's got a detent that holds it open and a detent that holds it closed. So it's like a liner lock for being closed, and then when you open it, it's like a liner lock holding it open. Sometimes the better ones have the detent arms on both sides. So you generally have one detent arm with the spring and a hole holding it closed. But when you open it, there's two. So there's two holes on one side and only one hole on the other side. There's two holes for when it's opened and one hole for when it's closed. That's generally how they're made. I, that's the, my preference, the best for how they're made. And you have the same kind of situation. If the detent's too soft, you know, you make those spring tension a little bit harder, you pull them out a little bit. And if the detent's too hard, you train them back in a little bit. And that was done in part one. Now, if the detent's too hard when you have it open, if you really dislike that and the spring tension thing isn't really what you want to do, well, then you can try the little Dremel trick to make it softer, but I've yet to see anybody who thinks that their slip joint knife locks open too hard. Maybe too hard when you're when it's closed, but when it's open, I like it to be even harder. You know, the closer it is to a lock knife, the better, right? So you just use the same adjustments, the same types of fixes on the slip joint detent knives as you do with liner locks and frame lock knives. So that's it for today. Thank you so very much for watching the video. Hope you learned something. Leave your questions and comments down below. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.